And here we go, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Belcher Vestige. It is the Blue Terran IVD Apocalypse! And his opponent has the red Zerg in the top left-hand corner. The incredible miracle. It is Biol. <laughs> now, the one thing that might be a little bit of a problem for Biol that we have to mention is he's played three series straight. That can be very difficult. Now, these pro players, you pro players, play 8 to 12 hours a day. But is it in this... Uh, is it this heated ever? Is it ever where you have to go from best of three to best of three to best of three and it can be very difficult for you to just mentally be there? No, I don't think so. They're, um, they're just used to this. Yeah, I mean, playing this much is no problem at all. Usually most pros play a lot most days of the week. So playing three best of threes at most nine games isn't much at all. If anything, though, sometimes you get tired if you're maybe jet-lagged a little bit. A little fatigued, right? Yeah. And if you have to wait a long time between matches, and you're just sitting around with nothing to do, and that can kind of wear you down. But it's well, not the actual games itself. Gotcha. Well, the reason why we did take that break a little bit is because Bjol did need that. He said, I need 10 minutes. He's absolutely uh, able to take that. So we gave it to him, and... From there, hopefully he's well rested. He's not fatigued anymore. He has that recharge. He can get back into this. We're gonna find out what he does. Bjol starting out with the hatch first and a spawning pool. No extractors. It's pretty much the only thing to mention. On the other side, we got a barracks. Standard stuff. No command center first. That's it's normally command center first, barracks first, or refinery first. Those are the three only options that you can do realistically. I guess 888 is the other thing. Uh, but it looks like Apocalypse is going to go the very standard Reaper Expand. And I like this Reaper Expand. We've talked about this a, a bunch of times, and Ben's talked about it a bunch of times. You get the Scout, and you get bonus damage. Do you know Ben's argument? What's Ben's argument? It's bonus damage whenever you kill something. Well, and I, get, I you guess get, that's actually correct. You get 100% scout out, out of everything. It's very cheap. And from there, you can transition to anything as you want. It's only a couple of seconds that you lose. It's a good viewpoint to have. Watch this. Bonus, bonus damage. damage. <laughs> it's so much bonus. Oh, he might get a bonus kill. No. Uh, now, you can't lose the unit. Yeah. That would be bad. But you just saw some bonus damage. And now he's just going to heal back. He's good to go. He's all right. Starting out with the factory directly after this, going... Oh, we're going to see some Banshee play. Second refinery being added very early on here. Normally when that happens, you will see a Banshee. This is a very um, risky way to play this, I would say. Because a lot of times, he's getting the reactor before getting additional marines, or even a second one. So a lot of times when this happens, uh, if any amount of Zerglings counterattack you while, while your Hellion is out on the field, you can just lose. Like, just straight up lose. And that's the worst position to be in. And also, let's see, Biol was able to see the Starport go down as well. Tech Lab right behind that. And it looks like Biol has a good understanding of what's going on. We'll see what he does to defend. Until 10 SCBs get pulled with the first 8 Hellions. And then he has no clue Sick what's life. going on anymore. Hey, it, it definitely could be that. And if you guys don't know what we're referring to, in the first game uh, of... No, in the third game of Apocalypse versus Suppy. Suppy. On Akalon Waste, a Apocalypse just went up to 10 Hellions, two Banshees, a couple of Marines here and there, and just pulled all of his SCVs, or a lot of SCVs, and went for a big attack. And it crushed Suppy. I mean, he had queens, a lot of queens. He had a lot of Zerglings that did nothing to that composition. But it's not that. You know what it is? It looks like Hellbat drops. Oh. We haven't seen this in a very long time. Are Hellbat drops still viable? I think they are. I always try to convince you to do it whenever you play ladder. I come over and I'm like, do Hellbat drops, do Hellbat drops. Well, I always think you're trolling me, which is something you commonly do. No, I think they're good, though. They're obviously nowhere close to as good as they were before. But they can still be okay, especially if you catch the opponent off guard. Well, kind of only if they catch the opponent off guard. But if they do, they can definitely get a lot of work done. Mm -hmm. Usually these days, you won't go with the first two. You wait till you have four and two, hell two medivacs and four hellbats. Because then you can't kill that many hellbats with two medivacs. 
with any amount of zerglings. You need roaches or banlings or something. Yeah, and especially the players that don't like to go roaches. This is a great way to punish them. But I guess he is going to go with one. So I guess I'm wrong. But we, we've kind of looked back at Beal's play and seen, oh, well, you don't like to start out roaches. Now, players that do like to start with roaches are like Sen. And uh, who is the other Zerg that we just recently saw that goes five? Hyun, of course, Hyun. And that gets punished pretty easily um, as well. But it's kind of like you have to know their style for that to, to really punish your opponent. Mm -hmm. Hellbat's going to drop. Are they going to drop in here? Yeah, they're going to actually surprisingly drop into the third base. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's doing it this way. Yeah, he, he's just revealing himself, and he's doing it at the cost of uh, a larva, a single larva. But no. Hellbat drops isn't that bad of a build. Even if you don't do damage, you're not that far behind the Hellbat Ooh. drop. Well, he's going to do damage. That's definitely nice. It's like bonus damage. <laughs> it is like bonus damage, except it's a much heavier investment, though, Michael. Yeah, I know. I'm making fun of you. <laughs> It's not me. You're making fun of Mr. Bitter. And I'm all about that. Well, I'm just kidding because obviously none of you guys said that this were supposed to do no damage. Yeah. But still, you can actually do no damage with a Hellbow Drop and not be in that bad of a spot. Yeah, so relative to that, it's bonus damage. Kind of bonus uh, damage. <laughs> okay, well, Zergrim's getting in here. An easy lift up, and he will be able to defend this seamlessly. I think, I think he's going to move out for a push with Marauders and Hellbats. Maybe now only one Marauder. This can still be difficult for Beal to deal with. If he doesn't, he doesn't have any Roaches, and he doesn't have Banelings. Yeah, and just a nice composition counter, even with the Banelings that are morphing in. I mean, this can do a lot, just an incredible amount of damage. But yeah. there's no, like, reinforcements that it can back up to, but still. I don't know, though. He has four spines, Hellbats. two Spines, a couple Queens, some Banelings. Now, I didn't realize he had a Baneling Nest yet. With that, I think he should be able to defend. Well, we'll find out in a bit as he approaches now. Uh, yeah, four queens. I mean, things are looking good. As you said, the spine crawl is helping out a lot, and the Hellbats still stay in a good position. But here it is, and the Hellions, or the Hellbats, are able to get a great. What? What? Are you kidding? Nothing is dying. That's incredible. And Apocalypse able to salvage a lot out of that. Get out with all of his medevacs alive. That's a very cost-efficient fight, I would say. 1,800 resources lost over the 575 uh, resources lost of um, of Apocalypse. You know what I would say to that? Cost-efficient fight. <laughs> oh my gosh, how cost-efficient. Cost yeah, the only thing going pretty well for Buell now <laughs> is, is creep, creep spread. It's Sweet already Jesus. across the map, and that's about as good as you can get by 11 and a yeah. half minutes. And I, this is very obvious to me that Beal will be taking the mid-left expansion yeah. as his third base, or his fourth base, and not the conventional mid-right-hand expansion, which I like that. You've been a big proponent of that, Ghost User. Yes, it's definitely the better base to take as your fourth, in my opinion. Especially if you have creeps for this far out so early. Um, it's just a little easier to defend. And often, Terrans take the third base, which Apocalypse is taking now, which is meant to use as a, an aggression point to attack the fourth base of the Zerg. Mm -hmm. But if the Zerg doesn't take that fourth base, it doesn't work out too well for you, does it? No, it does not, because you have to do another cross map uh, push just this way, and instead your third base is very, very exposed. Mm -hmm. So, especially without a planetary, uh, planetary fortress there, things can get a little bit tricky. We have a marine drop going into the main base. That's going to get shut down pretty easily, and 10 mutas out in the way along with centrifugal hooks. So things are going to spiral out of control pretty soon here with these drops. Apocalypse will not be able to maintain this level of aggression. Although he's doing a good job canceling the fourth base and killing the drone. Nicely done. Nice it, pickup. And it, retaining most this. of those units, but mm -hmm. the mutas are out now, and that should shut down this. He's using this to get positioning on a push on the other side of the map. And this could work out okay for him. There's a pretty good amount of banings, but he's pushing now and He's at least killing some Zerglings before Apocalypse's Banings catch up. Sorry. Or not Apocalypse's Banings. <laughs> uh, and, and this combination is working out very well. The Hellbat tanking so much damage in front. A lot of Banings are already dying now, getting position on the third base. Uh, but splits are needed here, and it's gonna be too much. It looks like over overwhelming his opponent. The Widow Mine finally able to connect, but it was too far back. A good trade overall, but the third base has been under attack while this is happening. 
and you can see there are no SCVs over here. Let's take a look at the damage. 12 workers killed against 4. So, uh, nothing too big just yet. I love the burrowed zerglings over here. It's just so intelligent. But it looks like... Uh, I think that was okay for... Uh, for... For Apocalypse, actually, that attack. Even yeah. though, like... He didn't gain that much ground. He's still trading out, and you want to trade out against a Zerg. Yeah. That wasn't too cost inefficiently. It wasn't that bad of an attack. It worked out okay for him. I think, obviously, it's not as much damage as I think he was hoping to get done, but it could have gone much worse. He yeah. had some pretty nice micro at the beginning of the fight, so he didn't take any very bad bandit connections or anything like that. SCVs are going to be attacked over here yet again. Uh, and now the muters are actually targeting down the command center. Oh no, the command center is going to be lifted, but there's not enough time. There's no units to repair, and down it will go. A big advantage for the Zerg player, Buell, starting out really nicely. And now finally taking his fourth. It looks like Apocalypse has already taken his fourth command center, so it's kind of a wash. I would s uh, maybe. Uh, it's, it's hard to tell because I kind of like Apocalypse's position, even though he's down the command center. Now he can just target this expansion the whole time, and it's a lot closer, covering his third base, so even though he lost his command center over here, it's only the command center. He didn't lose a lot of SEVs from that income tab showing 69 to 66. So yeah, I don't think Apocalypse is in nearly a, as bad of a situation as I thought before. Yeah, he doesn't have that many Widow Mines, but besides that, he's doing pretty well. His upgrades are in a nice position, and... Now that he's got this base up, that's going pretty well for him as well. He would be in, in an incredibly good spot, I think, if that other base hadn't died. But still, I think he's definitely doing okay. Yeah. We'll see 3-3 three, three on the way. Plus 2 Carapace just now finishing an attack into the natural slash main base is going to be stopped pretty easily here. As Zerglings will be killed. Pretty easy. Um, Apocalypse being thrown all around the map, though. And he needs to kind of stabilize and start asserting himself in a, a specific direction rather than just sending his whole army to a single direction. Unit tab showing 26 meters out on the field. And they're going to clean up one of these drops. Everything's looking fine. And now I'm moving up. Um, you know, this is a really scary army, I would say, for, for, uh, for Apocalypse. He can definitely do a lot of damage here. And the fourth base needs to be taken. Actually, Biel is still on a very low economic uh, game here. He doesn't have his fourth base running at all, and he's going for the counterattack. This can do a lot of damage, but a lot of Marines are from behind. Banelings, though, crashing on through, and we can see some great connections with these Banelings now going into the economic line, killing all of the SCVs, or the majority of them, going into the production. We're going to see a base trade because the Terran Apocalypse is going for the base trade as well. He's going into the natural base, just ravaging the, the Zerg. And I have to feel like this is going... Well, I don't know who this works out for, Mike. I think it should work out for Beal. If he can just control his bandings well enough, bandings are more supply efficient than Marines. And all he has to do is pick off enough Marines so he can come home and clean up the yeah. remnants of Apocalypse's army. And then Apocalypse usually won't have much that he can do. And not only that, I, I feel like uh, just using burrowed bailings, right? Like, you don't have the orbital command centers to really scan anymore. So you just keep burrowing those banelings everywhere and make it impossible for Apocalypse to really go into this situation. There it is. He's starting to burrow them. A scan is used. Also, he's cleaning up all the barracks and the factories and the starports. Yeah. And Apocalypse oh, is Apocalypse lifts! And he is able to get out there with the majority of the units. So now Apocalypse has almost no infrastructure to rebuild. And he has to push kind of slowly with scans on the way to make sure he doesn't run into bird bandlings. Mm -hmm. And even if he does that, I don't think he has enough bio for us to deal with all the ling bandling mutilists that it Oh, a surprising has. amount of bandlings are popping out here. And uh, once uh, once the Zerg player, Bjol, just uh, recollects himself and pushes for a single attack, he will be able to, I think, clean this up pretty easily as there's just mostly Marines. Marauder taking a lot of that fire in the beginning stages. Bjol, Pulling back just a little bit, but even this seems like it's enough. Uh, where are the mutas? There they come. All right. And here we're going to see probably the cleanup here. Biol just has way too much army. He's going to need a miracle apocalypse will to clear this up, and it's just going to overwhelm him. Banelings crashing through. 
And that's going to do it. Every medevac is going to go down. Nope, he's not going to chase the medevacs. But still, I mean, this base trade works out a lot better for Zerg. See, army supply, 2,725. Well, it doesn't matter. Just look at the mutas, actually. 16 mutas out in the field. I mean, 16 mutas are just so cost-efficient. They're one of the most cost-efficient units that you can get as a Zerg player in ZVT. And I think now all he has to do is poke around with the mutas and maybe attack with Ling Baneling. He can also just macro because the pocket is kind of stuck to this one base. But we'll have to see how he wants to play it out. That's right, mutas are going to directly engage again, so it looks like the, the medevacs. Killing a couple marines here and there, but killing the medevacs for sure, targeting them down. Uh, the main base is going to get cleared out. Now, Apocalypse, I mean, he can amass a force, but just the fact that there's two base, the infrastructure is still kind of there. The spire is on um, the spawning pool, and Baneling Nest is still there. I mean, Apocalypse has to redo all of his production. That's a lot more minerals and gas that he has to use over his opponent. And it just makes it very uncomfortable for him. Not only that, you can see he has to use scans to clear out some creep tumors. Biol has still a pretty good creep spread across the map. And it's just losing more and more infrastructure. But Apocalypse is not going to relent. He's going to keep fighting. Every last breath, Mike. Keep fighting. Well, it, it is this kind of it's kind of last chance to make the top eight. So of course we're not going to give up quickly. Yes. But it's uh, definitely a climb to make it back into this game. Maybe it makes a lot of sense just because, as I said, Biol was... He, this is his third series that he's playing in a row. If by any chance, even if, if it's a 1-2% fatigue, he's going to try to you know, get any, every advantage that he can to make Biol work for it. And he definitely is doing that right now. But... The door is closing pretty soon. The window is closing, I should say, for uh, for Apocalypse in game number one. Now expanding to the two corner positions or the side positions on this map, normally not used by these players. But the Marine fight in the front here is going to, well, the Plantar Fortress helps out a lot. And he's going to have to back up from here. Orbital Command Center is still being fired on. And if they go down, definitely, there's no way that Apocalypse can keep going from this. But again, backing up, killing the medevac. It's one of the most important units to kill because there's no starport in this composition. There's no factory in this composition. So these are just naked marines that don't have any support at all. Mm -hmm. And a bunch more mutalisk and zerglings coming in from Biol. He's also double expanded behind this. So he can probably establish an economy at the 4 o'clock base. But there's... Really nothing. Well, okay, Apocalypse. I'm trying to think of a situation where Apocalypse can come back from this. It's it's getting really hard. He has a lot of barracks. He has up to eight barracks, so he has good production. Yeah, but he can only make Marines. He can't make any mines. He can't make any medevacs. Yeah. And Marines are good, don't get me wrong, especially, you know, the, the regular Myonics that we see time and time again. But it's really those Widow Mines that enable your Marines more yeah. than anything else. I mean, still, if I were him, I don't think I'd quit this close to the top eight. Mm-hmm. You still always have some small chance. Yes. What if Bior accidentally selects all of his banelings and clicks X? And yeah, then that's true. You can just win a fight and win. It's been so. done before. We've seen that in tournament games. Uh, banelings are going to crash against a lot of these SUVs. And again, uh, Bior's just looking for the closing blow. And it will be approaching pretty soon here as he just starts to mass up a little bit more and more and more. But Apocalypse, he's been growing his numbers. And let's take a look at the army tab. Uh, it's 74 to 46 supply, so it's still a big advantage for Biol. Yeah, the problem also is that it's marines with no medevac support, no mines against Ling, Baneling, Mita. And plain marines aren't exactly that good against Banelings. So yeah, he's going to need a miracle. Tough one. He will need a miracle here as uh, Biol is pushing on in. The stim goes down. Good splits. This is off creep. But it's not going to be enough. There's just too much. All the command centers will go down from here. This is the crushing blow that we all needed to just wipe out Apocalypse from this game. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. Apocalypse taps out. And Buell will take the first.